Hi, my name is Lauren O'Connell and a lot has changed since our last presentation. So on Tuesday I moved home from break and I had a lot of mixed emotions. I'm really excited to be home but I already miss school and all the friends I made. I had a really great first semester because of all my new friends and being on the cross country team. I just had a great time and a few weeks ago I actually switched dorms because I had some roommate problems. It was nothing awful but now I get to live with one of my best friends and I'm just so much happier where I am now. So I can't wait to go back. But over winter break, I'll be taking an extra course. So I'm doing this because we have so much time off and the course is called Natural Philosophy, which is really interesting to me. This will also help lighten my schedule for, um, for the start of my junior year. And that's supposed to be one of the hardest parts of nursing school here and since I'm a fall athlete I just felt like this would be good for me in the future. Um, I also feel like it's a really long break so it'll give me something to do. Um, I can't wait to get back in the spring and for the spring I'm most excited to take my introduction to professional nursing class because it's going to be the first real experience that I get in the nursing field. And so aside from my nursing class, I'm also taking microbiology, theology, and of course, conversatio. I'm really excited for conversatio next semester because we seem to go deeper into more controversial class discussions, which is going to be super interesting. So I can't wait. Hi, we hope you enjoyed our last video where we talked about the Bhagavad Gita. Today we will be talking about one of our more recent readings, Desert Fathers. But we first wanted to do some quick introductions once again just to get to know us a little bit more. So, my name is Morgan O'Regan and I'm a freshman at St. A's. I'm a social work major and peace and justice studies minor. I'm from Connecticut, um, from a small town and it's about mm, like two and a half hours from Manchester. And tomorrow actually I'm headed home for Thanksgiving and then staying for winter break. So I'm super excited to see my family and some close friends who I haven't seen since pretty much August. Um, this semester has been crazy. It's been very interesting due to like all the remote learning and um, new experiences just as my first year of college. Um, this semester I took a lot of classes that were difficult and definitely different than I expected but I enjoyed them and I learned so much that I didn't expect to. Um, next semester I'm taking more classes for my major so I'm super excited. I'm taking sociology, race and ethnic relations, um, social services, and I'm continuing conversatio for another semester as well. Same with uh, the rest of our class. I'm so happy that I'm taking it again because I feel like I'm finally able to enjoy the class more and feel more comfortable with engaging um, with the class and our professor as well. I hope you enjoy our presentation on the Desert Fathers. Thanks. Hi, my name is Natalie O'Connor, and I hope you enjoyed our last presentation. I moved back home on Tuesday, and I was so sad to leave all of the friends I had made while I was at school, but it was so nice to be back home after three months. My first semester was so much fun, even with all the rules we had to follow. I was able to practice with my lacrosse team while wearing masks, and it was so hard to say goodbye to them. My last day of classes is November 20th, and then I will have a full week of no classes to study for my final exams. Over break, I'm going to go back to work to keep myself busy and to stay out of the house, and hopefully I'll be able to hang out with my friends. I picked my classes for next semester, and I'm excited to go back. I'm going to be taking conversatio, macroeconomics, first-year writing, and international business management. I'm looking forward to taking the second semester of conversatio because I like reading and then going to class and having a big group discussion and hearing what everyone else has to say. Everyone brings their own ideas to class, and we can all leave with a deeper and fuller understanding of the text we had to read the night before. For this presentation, we will be discussing the Desert Fathers. The Desert Fathers and Mothers' lives are depicted in these readings and serve as a text showing the monastic movement happening in this specific time period. The reason why people choose to enter the monastic life is because they want to focus on bettering themselves and separating themselves from society. By doing so, they can become a better disciple of Jesus and a better Christian overall because they can grow closer to him. One of the main goals of all people entering the monastery and the monastic life is to love God with all one's heart and one's neighbor as oneself. 
When entering the monastery, you must give up a lot of materialistic possessions as well as other unnecessary wants in your life and in your heart. By giving these up and sacrificing things that you don't need or even things that you need that are too much um, to have in your life, um, you're, as, you as a person, as an individual, are able to foster a genuine, healthy, and strong relationship with the divine and with God himself. The Desert Fathers text is written um, on the early development of the Christian monks. They followed the life of Jesus um, by dealing with his devotion through poverty, self-denial, and service. The stories are told through multiple different people on the journey, Anthony, Bassaro, Sarah, and Sinletica, who all devote themselves to a life of aestheticism, which will be later discussed in our video. Anthony the Great was the father of the monks and guided them through the desert in Egypt. Anthony believed that he heard from the Lord when he was having sinful thoughts. An angel sent to him and said, Do this and you will be saved. At these words, Anthony was filled with joy and courage. He did this and he was saved. Anthony, Anthony continuously heard voices answering his questions, which he perceived to be the Lord talking to him. This divine connection granted Anthony a following of many brothers. Men traveled from all over to visit Abba Anthony. When they visit and ask for wisdom from Anthony, he explains that they need to read the scriptures because all the answers they're asking for are within the scriptures. In one instance, a brother announced to him that he gave up all possessions and donated them to the poor, but saved a little bit for himself and then proceeded to ask to become a monk. In response to this, Abba Anthony instructed him to cover his body with meat and go into the village. When the brother returned, deeply wounded from animals tearing his body apart, Anthony said, Those who renounce the world but want to keep something for themselves are torn in this way by the demons who make war on them. Anthony's teachings closely align with the rule of St. Benedict as he urges complete and utter, utter selflessness in the name of Christ. Anthony continuously preaches selflessness and being free of judgment in serving God. The story on Abba Bessarion was recorded in first person by one of his disciples, Abba Dulis. Abba Bessarion was able to turn salty water into sweet drinking water and was later able to walk on water after he had prayed. When Abba Bessarion was asked how he was able to do it, he replied, God is here, God is everywhere. Abba Bessarion prays often and in a different way than what most people are used to. One quote from Abba Bessarion's section states that, On another day, when I came to his cell, I found him standing at prayer with his hands raised towards heaven. For fourteen days he remained thus. Abba Bessarion seems to complete tasks in sets of fourteen. He stood and prayed for fourteen days, and then it is said that, For fourteen days and nights I stood upright in the midst of the thorn bushes without sleeping, and for fourteen years I had never lain down, but have always slept sitting or standing. Although Abba Bessarion was constantly keeping himself open to God and helping others, he tells one man who has turned away from the church that he is also a sinner. This can shed light on a very popular saying that lots of people around the world use, nobody is perfect, not even men and women who spend their lives in the hands of God. The story of Sarah includes the power of Christ and the emphasis on gender roles of this time. Alma Sarah suffered with demons in her life for 13 years until she decided to give herself to the fear of God and essenceism and begin to pray. Once this moment happened, the spirit of fornication appeared and said to her, Sarah, you have overcome me, to which Sarah replied that it was Christ who overcame the spirit and not herself. From this moment on, she lived a strict monastic life. This moment gained Sarah fame as people came from all over the world to visit her. Two great Incaris came to visit her and then mocked her and told her that she and told her not to become full of herself. Sarah smartly replied by saying that although she was physically a woman, she had the mind of a man. This line demonstrates how inferior women were at the time, yet Sarah demanded respect from the men since her thoughts were superior to theirs. On another occasion, some monks came to visit Sarah and she offered them a basket of fruit. This basket was a test to see which monk would take the best fruit and who would leave 
the best fruit for her. The monks who took the bad fruit were labeled as true monks, according to Sarah. This is because they selflessly gave the good fruit for her. Ama, Ama Sarah's persistence against gender roles, along with her devotion of Christ, shows her, her, her shows her significance in the early monastic ways. The story of Synquetica touches upon fasting and poverty. She says, just as the most bitter medicine drives out poisonous creatures, so prayer joined to fasting drives evil thoughts away. Synquetica believes that fasting is good for you, even though it is bad for the body, it is good for the soul. She also believes that living in poverty is good. She says, do not let yourself be seduced by the delights of the riches of the world, as though they contained something useful on account of vain pleasure. She says that riches are an attraction to the devil, and the less a person has, the less attracted to the devil they will be. She touches upon monasteries and says that if you ever end up in one, do not leave it. Because if you keep moving around and leaving a place who worships God for the better part of their life, they will start to lose faith. Syncletica has no tolerance for bad actions or sins. She says, in the world, if we commit an offense, even an involuntary one, we are thrown into prison. Let us likewise cast ourselves into prison because of our sins so that voluntary remembrance may anticipate the punishment that it has to come. Syncletica believes that fasting, poverty, and punishments are the way to live life in order to go to heaven. Some vows and rules and concepts involved in monasticism are enclosure and cloister. They're similar. Um, it, that is the separation from the world and society. And as we discussed earlier, that's important because that is how you grow your relationship with God and become closer to the divine. Additionally, a celibacy and poverty are also um, different vows that you take when entering the monastic life. Uh, lastly, or one of them is giving up one's autonomy. So an example of this is the ability to decide for oneself how to use one's time, energy, and gifts. Um, and this is all in the practice of obedience, which is a large vow that is taken by the monks when entering the monastic life as a whole. Um, these practices involve a form of self-denial and discipline, which is called asceticism, which we mentioned earlier. Some examples of this aesthetic practice in early Christianity were sharing community, property, lifelong celibacy, refusal to remarry after the death of your spouse, and various types of service as well. All of this is done to grow the love for God and create a form of commitment with Christianity. And this commitment is similar to the idea of stability, which is commitment to your community as well as the divine and like the people in your community and the place you're living. Um, which oftentimes for monks, especially at St. A's, is the abbey, the church. Um, so that's a big part of stability and that commitment idea. Um, there are two types of monastic practices, uh, synobitic and anchoritic monasticism. So the synobitic is um, those who follow this type of monasticism. Um, and they follow a set strict rule and vow strict obedience to a superior. Often that would be the abbot for males or the abbess for females. Um, in this type of monasticism, there's an involvement of many different aesthetic practices, such as fasting, doing without sleep, and praying more. Um, in comparison to the Anchoritic, which emerged in the 4th and 5th centuries, in this type of monasticism, individuals will go um, into isolated locations far from populations to practice this aestheticism alone. Um, because they're alone, they become more reflective, and it's important time for them to deepen their relationship with their faith in divine. Um, as they do this, they actually don't take formal vows to obedience, unlike other types of monasticism, and they're always alone, so it's common for their practice of aestheticism to be very intense in comparison to other forms of monasticism. Um, from the start of Christianity, men and women uh, both sought to gain insight through aesthetic practices. So as men fled to the desert, as in the Desert Father says, so did women. And all of these people became well-known spiritual guides over time. And that's important to understand because oftentimes when you think of monasteries, you think of men, but there are females and abbesses also exist, which are 
the higher power in the monastery, and those are females, abbesses. In today's modern society, it is easy to get caught up in the modern technology. However, it is important for us to still find your purpose. In the story of the Desert Fathers contains so much wisdom. Detachment from the physical world is extremely important and something many people, including myself, rarely do. We are so caught up in technology and we can go hours without even thinking to give ourselves time without it. Especially as a young adult, it is easy to get caught up in insignificant things like social media and just screen time in general. We are very attached to materialistic things, so we must consciously try and separate ourselves from them and connect with the eternal world. The Desert Fathers has helped me become more in touch with what really matters in the world. Desert Fathers was interesting to read. It gave me a different point of view as to how I should live my life. Many believe that we need the materialistic part of life, like phones, in order for our life to be considered a good life. However, this is not the case. All someone needs in life is a food source, not a large one, a few personal items so they will not get distracted, and self-control over their actions, and to be aware of the consequences that will come with their actions. Many people do not think that having the bare minimum is considered a good life, including me. I always thought that you needed to have more food than just what you would need in one day, more clothes so you can change multiple times a day if you needed, or even a cell phone that you carry around everywhere, and a landline at your house. There are many sacrifices that people all around the world can make, but we just do not think that they are going to make a, a difference in our daily lives. Desert Fathers overall was an interesting text because it was super informative, but also very insightful into how we can live our lives to grow our spirituality and our well-beings as a whole. Um, a lot of the background into monasticism involves sacrifice and separation from society or certain aspects of our lives. Sacrifice is something that as a privileged young adult, I don't have to do often. Um, but sacrifice is not something that everyone has to do, but something that at times we should do along with stepping back and reflecting on our lives, similar to what monks have to do during prayer. Stepping back and realizing all that you have as a person and thinking about sacrificing what you don't really need, um, such as a ton of screen time or extra materialistic things. Desert Fathers helped me, helped me realize what I had and how monasticism and its teachings can relate to any individual's life, whether you want to enter the monastic way of life or not. This article is about the teachings of the Desert Father and how it can be useful in controlling our thoughts. The Desert Father claims that the cause for uncontrolled thoughts is due to sickness of the soul. The method used in the Desert Father to combat these uncontrolled thoughts is very similar to meditation. They urge men to guard their hearts, which is essentially being hyper aware of inappropriate thoughts and to be able to stop them from progressing. This method of guarding the heart gives men freedom from these harmful thoughts. By taking back their minds, they gain freedom. The article states, like guarding the heart, it invites us to change our way of being in the world and to make it a habit to pay attention to our thoughts, which infiltrate our soul. This perfectly explains how these teachings can be incorporated in our lives today. A more contemporary comparison would be how meditation and mindfulness will help prevent these negative thoughts from infiltrating into our lives which is pretty similar to our last presentation on the back of the Gita. Uh, the second article we chose as a group to discuss relating to the Desert Fathers is called Lessons in Quarantine from the Desert Fathers. And this article was super interesting because it not only related to the Desert Fathers, which was written a long time ago, but also connected it to a, something that's going on right now, and that's a pandemic and the quarantine that we all are living in. Um, so this article discussed the Desert Fathers and Mothers and who they were as people, how they came to be. Uh, they lived in huts and isolated monasteries where they fasted, prayed, and drew inspiration from Christ's time. Um, after discussing the lives of the Desert Fathers and Mothers and their goals, it connects to the time we are living in now, the pandemic. And I quote from the article, it says, if we look at the wisdom of these desert mothers and fathers, we will learn to love our solitude and carry it with us into the busy world again when we 
when this forced isolation is over. Um, this article was deemed very interesting because it did connect to the pandemic while also reflecting, reflecting on the doings of the Desert Fathers. Although the isolation from others creates horrible divides in our lives, it may distract us from the essential quiet of true, so true solitude. In the article, it suggests that during the time of isolation and quarantine, we grow the opportunity to grow our intimacy with Christ, our faith, and our relationship with the divine. In the article, it speaks on how this time is what you make of it. Yes, we could be allowing ourselves to be formed by the silence and loneliness surrounding us, or we can branch out on every opportunity, whether it may be normal or it may not be normal. We can learn from our experiences and grow in this time. A hard virtue, according to the article, to embrace during quarantine is hospitality. It is so hard to shower love to others in a time when we can't shower love to ourselves. In Desert Fathers, the love of one's neighbor is one of the most important practices. Hermits commonly would give up anything to give to others and tend to the sick and poor. This is something even during a pandemic we can do as human beings. We can be kind and compassionate to others in safe ways. Overall, the Desert Fathers taught us some valuable lessons and concepts that can truly be applied in a multitude of ways, one of which is the pandemic. The Desert Fathers relates to the themes of conversatio because of how it focuses on one's path in life. It closely aligns with the individual and the divine themes. It relates to the individual because of how the monks are essentially hermits of the desert on their journey to connect with God. The isolation can be perceived as selfish. However, this isolation is essential in their development in their spiritual journey. The journey into the desert is the only way they can truly detach from the temporal world and return a changed person. By living as Jesus lived, the monks are able to understand true Christian values and connect with God. They reach the ultimate level of divine connection. More subtly, the text connects to the community because when the monks return from the desert, they are better people and are able to contribute more significantly to the community. Overall, this text connects to the course of conversatio because it deepens our understanding of their origin of monastic values that relate to the individual, the community, and the divine. Thank you so much for watching our video. I had so much fun creating these presentations for you all to watch. I enjoyed sharing what I learned in Conversatio this semester with you. I hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving and a happy holiday season. Thank you so much for watching our presentation and we hope you enjoyed it. We had a great time putting this together for everyone and we learned so much throughout the process. Happy holidays. Bye! Thank you for watching our video. We are super excited we had the opportunity to record this for you and share a lot of what we've learned in our Conversatio class with you all this semester. Have a great Thanksgiving and holiday season. Bye!